Hi, Examiner here. Uh, welcome to my review of the Magix Samplitude uh, Studio. This is a, a proper recording studio rather than uh, the simple music makers where you just pull different tracks in um, and put them together. Uh, this is designed as a recording studio where you can record all your own synthesizers. Um, they can be VST, they can be live synthesizers. Great way of recording vocals, guitars, or whatever. Um, it is laid out like a professional uh, studio, um, much more complicated than the simple drag and drop of their other uh, of their other packages, which is the music makers. This is a, the actual music studio. Um, it does a lot more. So uh, let's have a little look, see what it does. Okay, so uh, they can have up to 64 different tracks. Um, put the record button there. That's a mute. So just mute that particular one, or you can just solo, which is the opposite to mute. Um, on each channel you can just simply press this effect and you can pull in an effect. There's loads of built-in ones. They see there's for drums, the different reverbs, different echoes for guitar, um, crunch, which is a distortion, you've got chorus, um, and that these were all built in. Uh, just to show you this one here, just load up the chorus, there we go. Okay, so it looks like a stomp pedal. Stereo, mono, loads of different uh, variations on them. That's just one of the ones that are built in. Uh, and here you can pull in your dynamic effects, sound effects. Um, if you're using audio, you can choose what your input is. I've only got one input, so it only shows you shows you one input there. Uh, you can set a separate gain for each for each channel. So if you have a, a say a VST synth that is, is extremely low output, you can just bring that up there. Here you go. Some of the built-in effects you can have per track. Graphic equalizer. We can use the bands or the actual graph itself. Um, compressors. These have all got uh, presets on, so you can just choose a preset if you want to, or just make it up yourself. Reverb and delay, and as I say, got all the different presets there. You can just make up your own. Let's flip into to vocals or different things there. Here you got a, an amp simulator. You can change the um, the actual amplifier and the cabinet model. Uh, it's not bad for for an inbuilt one. Um, probably cost you quite a lot of money to to buy one this good separately, but it's just built in. Uh, so that's per track. Dynamics built in. So this is um, a compressor expander. Got a, a few presets there. Um, you've got a graph to show you what's going on. It's reasonably powerful. Equalizer. Very good equalizer. Uh, just right click on it. There's your different bands. Now with the bass and the treble, you can uh, you can change what the graph's going to look like, and also how wide the you can choose how wide the band is that it's affecting. Just click on it, and then use the slider. Uh, you can you can really do some uh, major sculpting with these equalizers, and once again, it's per track. Obviously, the more you have, the more power you need from your computer. Something you need to remember when you're doing this. If you want to use MIDI, just click on the MIDI button. Um, and here you can choose what you're using as your MIDI input. Use my sound card. I'm going to use my, uh, my little 25 key keyboard. Um, but you can choose what you can use as your input, and then your output. So all of these ones here are built in, and these ones down here are your VSTs. Okay, um, so here we go. If you right click on the, uh, the S1, S2 channel, you can give it uh, a separate color. So therefore every MIDI or every recording that you put on that line will have the same color. 
it, uh, it makes it easier to find where you're going, especially if you have a lot going on. Um, and then you can give it a name. Now it needs to be a name that makes sense because uh, when you open up the, the mixer, just to show you, there it is there, with a color bar. Pop down here, open the mixer, and you see you've got the word base, and it's the same color. Makes it easy. So uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, make a MIDI track very easily. I'm using the inbuilt Revolta, very strange name, but it's a German company, so that probably means something a bit different there. Revolta is, uh, I guess, uh, an analog simulation. Um, it's very, very powerful. Some very, very big sounds. Click on MIDI editor. And, uh, have empty, we'll just put two bars in, and it opens up this. So here you see a grid. Um, you can choose whether you want 32 beats of the bar or 16, whatever you want. I'm just going to choose a note here. Already have the pen. There we go. Just going to click on that. You can stretch it. Just click on the edge and you can stretch it for how long you want the note to play for. So I'm going to have a little play just to see what I can come up with quickly. I am just making this up as I go along. If you use the right click, it will erase it. You can just, if it's highlighted, you can just press delete. So I've just dragged that along. It makes a much longer note. So if you're not uh, if you're not great at playing keyboard, you can still get some really really good riffs going on here without even touching the keyboard. Let's finish that off. You can see, I'm it's putting in a, a little one, and then I'm just grabbing the edge of it and pulling it along to make it a longer note. Fantastic, so just pull that in. Let's extend that last note out. And when we close it up, you see we have a MIDI object, and you can actually see the notes in there. I have added the inbuilt sound module Vita here. Uh, I'm using the drum program. I've just made a couple of little MIDI clips here. With the bass on, and here it is the acoustic rock. Pretty realistic sounds, I'm sure you'll agree. This is, say, this is included uh, in the program. Create a uh, MIDI track here. To show you one of the other editors, uh, this is actually the this is the normal one. This is the one I showed you before. If we go to this one, the drum editor. Now the drum names that you see here are actually laid out in general MIDI. Um, so if you're using a a module, this is what your the names will be correct. In this situation, I'm just using the inbuilt sound module, so this isn't going to be correct. So I'll just click on it to make it, and then uh, grab the edge, and that's the velocity, so therefore the volume. I'm just going to make something up here. Just gonna make something pretty simple here. Mm -hmm. 
didn't like that, so we're just going to move it along. So there you go, I haven't touched the keyboard at all. Um, with this way you can really play around with the, the different sounds and um, you can come up with something that's actually probably impossible to play, but still good to listen to. So after a bit of mucking around we've got this. That's just using the inbuilt drum editor. There we go. With the bass. There's actually three different ways of, of uh, editing MIDI in this. Uh, they're the two most popular. Just hold Control and we've got it copied. Don't want the loop in there, just take the loop out. And here's what it looks like from the main screen. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to put in another another VST just to show you can, how easy it is to fatten it up. I'm just going to use a short sub here and I'm going to copy those two, bring them down to this, this one here and play it. So a nice top end but I've got a nice sub bass underneath it, it really fills it out. And it's so easy to do. So now we have two bass sounds, got it on number one and number three. What I'm going to show you now, this is a mixer. It's called getting a sub mix. So you can balance the two sounds together. You go insert new track, add a sub mix. Uh, now I've um, Embedded it in the wrong place, I think. So if you if you if you've got a track and you don't like where it is on the screen or on your mixer, it's quite easy. Just collapse it up, just click over, and you drag it. So the bus, which is one I've just made, we can put all the way to the bottom, which is where I want it. I don't want it interfering with my recording channels. And there it is. And you notice that it also appeared now on the mixer right at the end. And it says bus one. So we've got our two bases. So we need to be able to balance them. But what if we need to change the overall volume? Just click to the bottom and say I want it to go to bus one here. And I also want this one to go down to a bus one. Now I can balance those sounds individually, but the overall volume is controlled by that. Fantastic if you're recording a drum kit, so you doubly record the overheads, the kick, the snare, and the tom separately. Well, you can have them separate, you can EQ them separately, but then you can control the volume as well. So what if you want to import some... Uh, some CD tracks. Simply go to the top here uh, on CD. Um, quite a few options, but the uh, the top one is the one we want, which is uh, load CD tracks. And this pops up. Now, if you hit uh, get info here, um, it goes and searches the web for you, and we'll put names in for the tracks. Um, this is extremely useful because when you're importing them it will actually have the name of the track listed for you. OK, and there we go. Uh, I apologise in advance for the music. It's, uh, it's old music because I'm an old person. Um, there are lots of variations you can do for, um, for importing it. Uh, some of them are very, very slow, but they're much more accurate. Um, not particularly bothered in this case, so we're just going to go for quick you can just click on one particular track to highlight it uh, and then import that one. Or you can just click select all tracks and uh, click the button and off we go. Got to give it a name. <coughs> there we go. And off it goes. Uh, 
at the fast one it can do a whole CD in about four minutes which is uh, which is very very fast so um, I'm going to do some time lapse here just to show you what happens this is the fast one if it's synchronizing it does take an awful long time but the uh, results are much more accurate There you go, I jumped in time a little bit. <coughs> no need to sit and watch that. And this is what it looks like. You, so you can actually see the waveforms. Um, I, I clicked to, uh, to import the CD track automatically, the numbering. Um, you don't have to have that. Just right click on and then you can delete. You can edit each waveform. Uh, and you can, you can normalize, you can reverse, you can you can cut. We really are. Uh, you can move them about. Um, you can see down the bottom it's got the names of the tracks. As I was saying, if you look it up on the net first, it puts the names of the tracks in. Um, it's a great way of making your own compilation CDs. Um, I must point out that, of course, it might be against copyright rules, but there you go. Uh, if you hold down control, you can keep hold a number of them together and then move them all in one go. Um, so I've just moved a couple around here, slot it in there. Um, up the top here you've got different options. If I hit T, that's for track. And you can you can you can pick them up and move them where you want them. Um, or if you hit auto it automatically puts them in and puts the, the E for end so that's, it knows where to put the end and uh, you can just press this button and burn it on the fly just to show you here that under master we have a parametric EQ which affects everything really alter the sound, really master it well here. This is a three-band, multi-band compressor. If you've got really old, uh, old CDs or whatever, you can really pump them up. Stereo effects, you can make it mono or, or wider. It's all your different uh, presets. There you go, and that's uh, that's part of the program all built in.